Lisbeth is a short story published in 1886 by the English author Rudyard Kipling. First appearing in the Civil and Military Gazette newspaper, Lisbeth tells the story of a family of farmers struggling to survive in British-occupied India. Lisbeth explores ideas of race as they relate to the attitudes of both European missionaries and the British Empire's indigenous subjects. Sanu and Jada are farmers living in Kotgar, a valley community located around 50 miles outside Simla, the capital of the Himachal Pradesh province and the summer seat of the British government of India. They have a young daughter named Lisbeth. Calamity strikes when the family's corn crops fail and their opium poppies are destroyed by bears. Feeling betrayed by their religion and belief system, the family embraces the Christianity offered by the local missionaries. Unfortunately, their luck gets even worse after the conversion, Sanu and Jada both die of cholera, leaving Lisbeth an orphan. With nowhere else to turn, Lisbeth is invited by the local Christian chaplain to serve as his wife's companion and servant. Over time, Lisbeth grows to 5 feet, 10 inches. Each day, she goes on long walks, between 20 and 30 miles, between Kotgar and Narkunda. The author refers to them as little constitutionals, reflecting his admiration of the Cotter locals' athletic ability and Lisbeth's particularly long stride as a tall woman. One day, she returns to the Christian mission with an unconscious Englishman she came across on her walk. Excited to have found her husband, Lisbeth is severely chastised by the chaplain and his wife for having brought scandal on their family. In the eyes of the chaplain and his wife, the problem is not so much that Lisbeth picked up a random man off the side of the road, but that the man is white and Lisbeth is not. Despite being accused of deep impropriety, Lisbeth continues to spend time with the Englishman, whose occupation is vaguely defined. He seems to be a sort of amateur horticulturist and lepidopterist. The Englishman eventually recovers. Yet while he appreciates Lisbeth's efforts to nurse him back to health, and although he finds her attractive, the Englishman says he must leave, for he has a fiancé back in England to whom he must return. In a misguided and rather cruel effort to avoid causing a scene, the chaplain's wife tells the Englishman he should promise his hand in marriage to Lisbeth before departing. Lisbeth waits in agony for the Englishman's return. Tired of Lisbeth's wailing and uncertainty, the chaplain's wife reveals her deception, telling Lisbeth that a marriage between a white man and a non-white woman is wrong and improper. Lisbeth is angry, less because of the wife's racist views of miscegenation, but more because of her lies. In response, Lisbeth vows to leave the mission, denounce Christianity, and return to her indigenous community. Still eager to obtain a husband, Lisbeth impulsively marries a woodcutter who turns out to be viciously abusive. For the chaplain's wife's part, she has little sympathy for Lisbeth, saying, there is no law whereby you can account for the vagaries of the heathen. Dot dot and I believe that Lisbeth was always at heart an infidel. The author's own views of whether Lisbeth is an innocent or an infidel are complicated by the fact the story is told to him by Lisbeth herself. Rather dismissively, the author adds that Lisbeth, when she was sufficiently drunk, could sometimes be induced to tell the story of her first love affair. Rather than view the story in simple binary terms Lisbeth was either a wounded maiden or a hussy native, the missionaries either noble and well-intentioned or wicked and hypocritical the scholar Harold Bloom examines the story in more explicitly imperial terms while the denser of Kipling's contemporary English readers might have overlooked the irony and simply interpreted Lisbeth as either an affirmation of their beliefs on miscegenation and the white man's burden or a quaint tragedy about true love lost. Perceptive readers were forced to ask themselves just what good the missionaries brought to this girl's life and whether the same holds true for the imperialist enterprise as a whole. While the racial politics of Kipling's writing he ran elsewhere is undeniably problematic by modern standards, it's true that he was one of the only Western writers at this time, willing to relate stories from the perspective of non-white protagonists. I hope you enjoy this video leave a like, if you didn't be sure to subscribe for more lore thank you all so much for your support.